Hi, my name is Jerry Jin. What I'd like to do today is uh, tell you about resonance and how resonance can be used as the basis for detecting vib vibrational energies and subtle energies. Let's define resonance. We all know that if you have a tuning fork, and strike the tuning fork. All tuning forks that are octave below or above uh, it will vibrate. Same can be said for if you have a stringed instrument. In this case, there's a picture of a monochord and there's two fixed points. Um, and the length of the string between the two fixed points will denote the what that note is. If you pluck that string, it will vibrate, and strings which are twice that length, four times that length, half that length, a quarter of that length, ad infinitum, shorter or longer, will also vibrate. That is resonance. And that is the basis for detecting subtle energies and vibrational energies also. How do we measure this? How can we detect this? Well, we know for the monochord example, it's a string length that determines what the note is. And that notes that are higher or lower in octave will also vibrate. You can do the same thing with a pendulum. And in the pendulum, it's a string length between the, your fingers and the uh, weight on the pendulum that determines what that note is or what that um, uh, vibration would be. It's the same principle as a stringed instrument. And therefore, you can be in resonance with that vibration using a pendulum. Let's take the example of determining the string length for the color red. You have a pendulum. You hold the pendulum next to the weight of the pendulum. And you gradually slide your fingers up on the string. And you get the pendulum moving in a to and fro motion. And at the string length that is in resonance with the color red, the pendulum will rotate clockwise. So now you would have the wavelength for the color red. The tools you use to do this is based upon what's called a neutral pendulum. It's not a crystalline pendulum. Uh, it's just neutral in nature so that you can detect the wavelengths of whatever it is you want to detect. If it's non-neutral, then you can start detecting energies that are uh, that may be interfering. And here is an example of a pendulum made of uh, flour, salt, and water, which is a formula for a play-doh that will dry to a hard sphere in a little sphere. Another example is an acrylic sphere, uh, one inch diameter. And in my book, uh, The Seeker and the Teacher of the Light, I give instructions on how to make the flower, salt, and water pendulum. You can use a wooden pendulum. Um, it's not at quite as neutral, but it's, it'll, it'll work. Um, so you can, and, and wooden pen, pendulums are readily available uh, on the internet. And so that is the basis of the tool that you'd use to detect subtle energies. So we'll be talking about dowsing and about radiesthesia. Dowsing is typically a, a mental exercise uh, in which you ask, the, you try to keep your mind neutral, but you ask questions uh, or make statements and get yes or no answers. In the field of radiesthesia, also called physical dowsing, uh, 
it is not that. It's uh, the awareness of being in resonance with an energy and allowing that resonance to dictate the rotation of the pendulum. And you can use this uh, for multiple purposes. What dowsing and radiesthesia does is allows your unconscious uh, mind uh, or your right brain uh, to be able to access information and the uh, the tool dowsing tool radiesthesia tool uh, allows an unconscious action that your conscious body can use to cause rotation of, of the uh, pendulum. And it's in the right brain where most information is, and you're only aware of a small fraction, a few percentage of information that you can derive from your senses. Uh, but it's this other information that you're trying to get access to. Uh, you can measure your vibrational energy level uh with a personal wavelength and i'll have a special uh, session uh, on youtube that will describe this and this is a very useful tool to understanding who you really are and you can determine the wavelength once you know your personal wavelength you can determine if uh, a food supplement a drug uh, or anything else is good for you by using that tool And you can find other types of information, uh, sources of problems in the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual arena using these tools. And there's various other tools that uh, one can use. It's typically taught in biogeometry courses uh, where you can uh, have access to a whole series of other information, which I won't go into here. How does radiesthesia work with a pendulum? The way it works is that uh, you get a pendulum moving to and fro. And uh, if you're looking at something that you're trying to determine a wavelength of, uh, that mere thought, if you have the right wavelength, for the, that is which means the string length uh, is the right length, the pendulum will rotate clockwise when it's in resonance. Uh, with whatever you're looking at. If it's not in resonance, uh, it can go to and fro. If something is definitively, if it's neutral, it'll go to and fro. If something is definitively bad for you, a toxin, whatever, uh, the pendulum will go counterclockwise. In the radius seizure, you're not really thinking about clockwise, counterclockwise. You've trained yourself so pendulums can go that either direction, but you're not, uh, you're just getting a to and fro motion. And the energies from your subconscious mind or right brain will send the message to your fingers, and the pendulum will rotate uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, or to and fro. And in this way, you get very accurate results. And in another uh, talk, I'll talk about securing your resonance and how to uh, bring yourself uh, into harmony so that uh, your measurements uh, are have, have the greatest chance of being very accurate because you're into another vibrational state where you are in tune with the energies that are around you. Dowsing does also work, uh, and some people will prefer using dowsing. Uh, sometimes it's called mental dowsing. Um, I'm not going to be teaching that. I'll be teaching you more of the radiesthesia techniques. Um, I think that that is not prone to mental interferences uh, because you're just in a state of awareness. In mental dowsing, what you do is you, you make a statement or ask a question and you get a yes or no uh, answer by the direction of, of uh, swing of the pendulum. You've trained the pendulum to do that. Uh, typically, a pendulum going back and forth, uh, which is uh, similar to nodding up and down 
means a yes if it goes left and right, similar to you're turning your head left and right. Uh, it means no, but you've trained your body to, to and therefore mentally have trained your pendulum to, to do that. And you can get a number also if you want to have uh, sometimes things aren't black and white and might be a percentage and you can uh, have a zero to 100 percent on a scale and have the pendulum point to what the number is or zero to 10. And you try to you also try to keep your mind as neutral as possible. And uh, similarly, you can use uh, harmony principles to, uh, to secure your resonance to make sure that uh, what you douse is as accurate as possible. And I will teach that method. And as I stated, the right brain is where the information is, and that's what you're trying to access because the right brain will know the vibrational energies of things that you cannot see or feel because uh, uh, the left brain is what uh, is, works with the senses. The right brain sees much more. And the pendulum is a focusing device because that's what really it is. It's a device to focus that information from the right brain and cause the pendulum to move in the direction that um, it needs to move in the direction that uh, is in resonance with what you're seeking. And you're keeping your conscious mind out of the way throughout this whole process, other than getting the pendulum moving and knowing that uh, you're just seeking the resonance. And it'll either go clockwise or counterclockwise, tickle, um, or walking. Um, when you're a, a baby, you're just learning to walk until you get those motions set into your body. Uh, you don't walk. You learn to crawl first. Riding a bicycle, same thing. Uh, once the brain has set it and has learned how to ride it, it's automatic and it, the body just does it. And that's what uh, you need to do when you're working with the pendulum. The pendulum just moves based upon uh, your right brain knowing what to do. And uh, we'll have uh, a YouTube that talks about measuring your vibrational level. And we'll have another YouTube on personal wavelength so that you can determine when you go shopping or buying supplements or buying minerals or whatever, uh, what is good and what is bad for you. You have control over your life in that way. And you can also do it with regular dowsing. Um, but I won't go through the details of that in, in uh, these talks. We will look at it in terms of looking at uh, subtle energies also. And this is just a list of the YouTubes uh, uh, that I have on my channel uh, that uh, will go through a whole series of different subjects, including uh, materials such as GANs and Ormus, because they're involved in uh, understanding what creation is all about. And we'll talk also a little bit about uh, biogeometry. So thank you.